A geometric sequence is a sequence with a common ratio between consecutive terms. Here is an example of a geometric sequence. If we take a pair of consecutive terms, say 8 and 4, we divide 8 by the term previous to it, which is 4, we get 2. This number is known as the common ratio, or R. It's common to all consecutive terms. So if we take 32 and divide by the term previous to 32, which is 16, we also get 2. Um, we could also just take the second term and divide by the first term, t2 divided by t1, which is just 2 divided by 1. Like for the case of an arithmetic sequence, the first term, or t1, is referred to as a. For this particular sequence, a is equal to 1. The common ratio is referred to as r. For this sequence, r is 2. So these are the two parameters that you need to fully define a geometric sequence. If you know these two parameters, you can write down the sequence. Now here is another example of a geometric sequence. In this sequence, A is 1, just like before. But what about R? Well, R can be found by taking, say, the second term and dividing by the first term, or the third term divided by the second term. Whatever. Take any two consecutive terms. Well, if we take t2 over t1, we get minus 2 divided by 1, which is minus 2. So for this sequence, r is negative. We see if we multiply minus 2 by 1, we get minus 2. Minus 2 times minus 2 is plus 4. Minus 2 by plus 4 is minus 8. Minus 2 by minus 8 is plus 16, and so on. So this is also called an alternating sequence. The signs alternate, plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus, and so on. Here is another example of a geometric sequence. For this geometric sequence, the first term, a, is 4. What about r, the common ratio? Well, we could take the second term and divide by the first term. So we could take 2 and divide by 4. In this case, r is a half. So if we multiply a half by 4, we get 2. A half times 2 is 1. A half times 1 is a half. A half multiplied by a half is a quarter. A half multiplied by a quarter is 1 eighth. Half times 1 eighth is 1 over 16, and so on. So the terms are actually getting smaller and smaller. Actually, these terms are approaching zero, because as we increase this denominator in the fraction, the numerator stays the same, the numerator stays as plus 1. The entire fraction is going to approach zero. So that's actually what happens if r is a number between 0 and 1. It has to be strictly between 0 and 1. Or if you or if r is a number between minus 1 and 0, the same thing happens. We could have, say, a value of r of minus a half, and in that case the series would alternate. We'd have 4 minus 2, uh, plus 1 minus a half, plus a quarter minus 1 eighth, in the same way as for the previous sequence. So if r lies between 0 and 1, or r lies between minus 1 and 0, the series will actually converge we can actually combine these two ranges here and say that r lies between minus 1 and plus 1. We can just combine these two into a single range. I'll discuss more about this later. Let's see how to get a formula for the nth term of a geometric sequence. The nth term is known as Tn. If you've seen the video on arithmetic sequences, the same notation is used here. Now the first term, t1, is also known as a, so this is t1. I'll write the actual term number above it. How do we get the next term, t2? Well, what do we do? We multiply the common ratio r by a. r times a is ar. I'll write it as ar. How do we get the next term, t3? Well, we just multiply r by the second term, r times ar, or ar times r, well that's just ar squared. And then we look for a pattern. How do we get t4, the fourth term? Well, we multiply r by t3, so we have ar cubed by r. Of course, when we multiply r cubed by r, we just add the powers, so we get ar to the power of 4. Or sorry, um... We have ar squared by r, which is ar to the power of 3. Similarly, we can get t5. It's r times ar cubed, which is ar to the power of 4. Now, what about the nth term? 
Well, let's look at the pattern. We can see that the power of R is one less than the subscript of T. So um, we're going to have the same situation here. We're going to have A R to the power of something. But that something is going to be one less than the subscript. What is one less than N? Well, it's N minus one. So if N is five, then the power is five minus one, which is four. If N was say four, then the power would be four minus one, which is three. So that gives us a formula for Tn of an arithmetic series or sequence. Tn is AR to the power of N minus one. We're talking about a sequence here. All the terms are separated by commas. Later on, we'll talk about a series where we're actually summing all the terms. Suppose we have this geometric sequence here and we want to find the fourth term. Well, we write down what A is. A, the first term, is 2. And we work out R. R is got by taking any term and dividing by the previous term. So 6 divided by 2 is 3. And uh, if we want to write down Tn, we know that it's AR to the power of n minus 1. We want the fourth term here, which means we want T4. A is 2. R is 3, N is 4. Now, we must put 3 to the power of 4 minus 1, or 3 to the power of 3. We must do this calculation first, and then multiply by 2. It's incorrect, of course, to multiply 2 by 3 to get 6 to the power of 3. That's incorrect, because this number here is different from this, this 3. Okay, we can't just combine these unless these numbers were the same, unless the base numbers were the same. So we have 2 times 3 to the power of 3. 3 to the power of 3 is 27. So we have 2 times 27, and that's 54. So the fourth term in this sequence is 54. And that's easy to check. If we multiply our, uh, 3 by 18, we will indeed get 54. Suppose we were given the reverse situation. Suppose we were given that the nth term of this geometric sequence is 54, and we have to find n. The nth term means that Tn is equal to 54. Well, we know what Tn is. It's AR to the power of n minus 1. We put it equal to 54. Um, A is 2. R is 3. And n is what we're looking for. So we'd have to solve this equation. Of course, we know the answer is 4, because we just did this earlier. We know that T4 is 54, but let's see how to do it, how to solve this equation. The first thing you would do is divide across by A, divide across by 2. So we have 54 divided by 2, which is 27. And then what you would do is just go to your calculator and take successive powers of 3 until we get to 27. We can also solve this using logs. But I don't want to go into logs in this video. Um, what I want to do is just show you how to work it out using our calculator. Let's start by taking 3 to the power of 2. So we put in 3, put this to the power of 2, and we get 9. Of course, you know what the answer is, but I'm just showing you how you would do it systematically. If we put 3 to the power of 3, we get 27. So we know that this power, n minus 1, must be 3, because 3 to the power of 3 is 27. The power has to be some integer, so it won't take you too long to find it. It has to be some positive integer. It can't just be any old number, because n is a positive integer. So you have to do that. Of course, it's a mistake to divide it across by 3. This is not 3 times n minus 1 equals 27. It's 3 to the power of n minus 1. So if the power is equal to 3, then n must equal 3 plus 1, which is 4. If you know about logs, you could solve this a different way. If you don't know about logs, well, then you can ignore what I'm about to say. But you could take this equation here and get the log of both sides. It doesn't matter what the base is. Um, we could use base 10 or base E. If it's base E, it's written ln. Then we use one of the rules of logs, which tells us we can bring the power in front. And finally, to get n minus 1, we just take ln of 27 and divide by ln of 3. 
here is ln of 27 and we want to divide it by ln of 3 and we get exactly 3 so n equals 4 as before so that's if you want to use logs but you don't have to do this um, it won't take you long to find your answer just by inspection just by looking at different successive powers of 3 until you get this number here and once you've found that 3 to the power of 3 is 27 you just put the power equal to uh, 3 and then solve for n 